well there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, just like I would do on the first Wednesday of every month for the Community Poetry Open Mic Reading Space, where I would read material from brand new book releases. I am keeping this spirit alive of this open mic that shut down because of the pandemic. Sniff. Um, but I'm going to, for a change of pace, read some poems that are coming up in an upcoming book. They are not released yet, but they will be in the 2023 Cyberwood book titled Testament. I know I keep showing up this potential cover uh, for you guys. Um, the first section is a bunch of poems at our post Roe v. Wade poems, and I'm going to read to you maybe three. I'll, just, I'll see how it goes on time. We'll check our time because of the 1 to, uh, to 3 p.m. time slot for this. Um, this first one I'm going to share with you is titled Queuing is Defeatist but Fighting for Freedom. I don't know why I keep doing it. I don't know what I'm hoping to find. Wait, I do know what I'm looking for. I just didn't think it was so impossible to find. Since the overturning of Roe v. Wade, something that's been a part of my whole life, I've been looking for change, checking the news, hoping. So after searching the news, I see that France and Israel have chosen to strengthen their abortion rights for women after the U.S.'s overturning of Roe v. Wade. And I know I love Brie Capri sandwiches sitting in a Paris cafe looking out on the street at the passersby, but I know how quickly they can be conquered by Nazis in World War II. I mean, I've seen video footage of Hitler touting his then conquered, uh, uh, touring his then conquered Paris. So, so after all these years, it's good to see that France is being so quick to support women's rights. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> but, but no, I, I'm no French girl, and no, I'm no Gal Gadot Israeli overcoming against all, even though each and every one of us is a Wonder Woman. <laughs> I still feel like the ever-repressed goth girl shunted by your soul, sh shunted by Rut's right. I know this goth girl may be a defeatist at heart. For when we've seen the evils of the world in an early age, we can only feign optimism for the minions. But when something so cruel is done, even us goth girls want to fight. I suppose our only choice becomes fighting any way we know how to make sure the world knows that these select southern United States shouldn't have the right to steal liberty and freedom. Now, most of us now find our way to fight somehow, anyhow, whichever way how, to regain our wants and future rights. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that was the first one. I think I'm going to share with you three poems that are on the first section of the post Roe v. Raid poetry section of the 2023 cyberwit.net poetry book that's going to be out um, titled Testament. So, and I'm sharing with you all on the same theme, uh, all these similarly themed poems. This, huh? Oh, no. I'm going to share with you one that talks more straight up sciences. I was still going to see what is the next one it's telling me to share. I am going to share with you a poem that goes in between sections. I'm not sure if it's after this section one or section two, but this is a cool science one. For people who know me, I do my science stuff. This is a poem I hope you enjoy called Ultimately the Goddamn Particle. <laughs> this is part one, the history lesson. The theory of how the Big Bang started to create matter, evolve, well, it goes a little something like this. The theory is that all the universe's energy was created from this massive explosion from relative nothingness. But the question begs itself, how did all that energy turn into matter? Now, keep in mind, in the first few minutes of our universe after the Big Bang, temperatures were so hot that it was too hot for energy to even make any matter. This bottleneck delayed the formation of matter until the universe was literally cool enough to make anything out of anything. But just a few minutes after the Big Bang, elements burst forth when the universe was suddenly cool enough. 
like 20 minutes after the Big Bang, the universe was suddenly too cool for nuclear fusion or photosynthesis. Elemental abundances were nearly fixed. That means that the first two elements in our periodic table were all that was formed in those first few minutes of the Big Bang. So the creation of matter out of energy or the formation of the universe came from only this really, really brief period of the universe's history. Trick two, the science lesson. Now, scientists postulate theories like the Big Bang and feverishly devise ways to prove or disprove postulations. But how do you prove how matter was formed in the universe? Well, scientists propose that a Higgs field is an invisible field of energy throughout the entire universe. They deduce that the Higgs boson is a particle in the field, which interacts with any energy passing through the Higgs field. With that interaction, particles of energy, massless particles, they trade a photon for a boson, energy for mass, to pass through. If they're right, this Higgs field in the beginning of the universe created matter. So for half a century, these scientists types went to the Large Hadron Collider in Geneva to move tiny particles at galactic speeds to see if they could actually find the Higgs particle. The Higgs boson is what's called this is what it's called, this fundamental force carrying particle of the Higgs field that literally grants other particles their mass by trading from energy a photon with, wait for it, a boson. <laughs> well, that's the theory. As I said, these science types were, were searching for this elusive particle that would explain what helps create mass, completing that standard model, model of particle physics, which we know is kind of a big deal since our universe wouldn't exist without mass. Since the Higgs boson only existed in the high energy conditions of the early universe, they needed the LHC to make some serious energy to prove their theory which they did in 2012, some 50 years after the rise of this theory. But in that time, this Higgs particle gained the monitor, moniker the God particle, which has left science and religion and the masses trying to tie religion and science. Okay, maybe scientists didn't tie them together because the only reason why that moniker stuck was after Nobel Prize winning physicist Leon Lederman wrote a book about it in the 1990s, titling it The Goddamn Particle, poking fun at the difficulty in finding it. This was the title of the book, and it was wildly popular for, the book, for a book about physics, but publishers didn't like that title, so they changed it to the God particle. And this really didn't please scientists and it further muddied real scientific work by marring it with religion. But if you search enough for the info, the entire truth really is out there. If only you know where to look. <laughs> That was fun, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I gave you a poem that goes in between sections of the book, Testament. Testament, say it with me now, Testament. It is not released yet, but it is a book that has multiple sections. That was a poem that goes in between sections, I believe.